Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Shop Talk with Joe, part 10. Yeah, I, uh, I guess we're having a ball with this. You guys will leave me a lot of great comments. Um, telling me to keep it up, keep it going, and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that uh, through the winter months anyhow, just so, you know, I can show you all the little things I always got going on, the projects and whatnot, you know? But there's gonna be other videos. There's gonna be videos of snowshoeing, and there's gonna be some winter camping and some outdoor stuff. So just don't think my videos are turned into, you know, nothing but a shop talk, because that's, that's definitely not the case. Anyhow, first things first. PBR. See if I can drink this one during this video. You guys are you guys are cracking on me because it seems like I take one sip and I'm so busy bullshitting I can't get down another sip of beer, but I'll see if I can make that change in this one. Um our Native American for uh Shop Talk with Joe Part 10 is Siwatawa. Sawatawa is a Zuni. Yeah, cool, right? So that's our Native American for uh, Shop Talk Part 10, guys. Anyhow, you know what? I, I just can't get over the support. You guys have been fantastic. Um, the hat for tonight's video is my Mad Trapper, um, Ray Wild Wilderness sent me a Christmas card and he's trekking through, you know, some pretty hardcore territory in Wyoming and there's snow down and it's about 47 degrees below zero with no wind chill. You want to see the way he's dressed and he's wearing one of these. So this is Arctic, um, uh, Arctic hair, Norwegian hair fur. That's what it is. Norwegian hair. Very, very thick rabbit fur. Just absolutely fantastic. You know, how it goes the air flaps come down. All that good stuff. But yeah, I absolutely love this hat. When I'm ice fishing, stuff like that, I gotta stay warm. I use it all the time. I absolutely love it. So that's the hat for tonight. Um, snow, we got snow. We're real excited. Um, we ended up with just over 14 inches of snow. So we got a good snow pack and um, Sandy and I are going to be doing some snowshoeing. We were going to go yesterday afternoon, but um, we had so much going around here in the new place um, with just a fresh painting, getting wall plates back up and the rooms all back together again. And then I put on a nice venison dinner. So we do go out with our headlamps on, but um, I'll shoot you some daylight video of snowshoeing out in the back. Um, when we get around to it, but uh, just wanted to give a little shout out to uh, DLC knives What's going on bud all my new subscribers? Thank you guys so much Really appreciate it on um, go back and watch some of my older videos Check it out you find out a lot more about what I'm about and what I do and Why I am this way I don't know I guess it's working out <laughs> You, you guys are, you guys give me a lot of great support. But anyhow, uh, let's move on to uh, question and answer. Um, Greg, uh, Busy Can Do. Go check out Greg's channel, Busy Can Do. B U S Y C A N D O. Um, really great channel. He's in Oregon. He's a great, great guy. Really good friend of mine. And he asked me if I've ever seen Bigfoot. No, I've, I've never seen Bigfoot, and I've never seen any sign of Bigfoot, but I've always been fascinated with Bigfoot, big time. Sasquatch, Yeti, oh yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, you know, and now with YouTube and being able to watch all these videos that people put out about, you know, sightings, actual sightings, some of them are pretty damn compelling. I mean, I, I really got... I, I got really involved in watching these videos, you know? I didn't know what to think. So um, I decided a good idea would be to call a 35-year Alaskan guide named Jared Owens from Alaska Guide Creations. Um, and you can check him out too, 
uh, Alaska Guide Creations. He sells that great chest pack, that bino chest pack that you'll see Glenn Trayer wearing and Tammy Trayer. And I've got a little bit more about the Trayer residents. Just want to say hey, folks. But yeah, um, and he's been in the woods for, you know, months at a time. And I said, please don't think I'm crazy, my friend, but what do you think, you know? Have you ever seen Bigfoot or any track or sign? He goes, no, I've never seen any track or sign. I've never seen any place where they could have eaten, where they could have slept, where they could have passed, they could have died. Nothing, no sign, not even a track. So I, I don't know, I think that kind of answered my question. But, uh, no, I've never seen one, Greg, but great question, buddy. Thanks for asking. Ray, Wild Wilderness. Go check out Ray at Wild Wilderness. Great channel. If I only had two calibers of rifles, what would they be? Um, I would have my 7mm 08, uh, Model 700 Rem Mountain, and I would have a full-length barrel 12-gauge uh, semi-automatic shotgun. And that way I can pretty much cover all bases pretty well, you know. 12 gauge, good solid, super accurate rifle. I don't know how you can go wrong with that, you know. That's uh, that's my thoughts, Ray. Um, you know, I love my 22s, but if you could only had two, have two, boy, that you start to draw a fine line there, you know. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But anyhow, great question, brother. Um, Robert, man. Bluegrass bushcraft. There's some bluegrass for you, buddy. Um, he wanted to see a little bit more of that 1927 uh, Ithaca flu shotgun. So let's show him a little more of that. Where's that old dog? There you go. Now back then... They didn't blue barrels. What they did was they browned them. So this is a brown shotgun. All the checkerings all done by hand. I don't know if you can see that. That's all done by hand. And that lock is just as tight, guys, as you can imagine. I mean, she's beautiful. Double ejection, 12 gauge. Super sweet. So, yeah, Robert, this is a real sweetheart. You know, uh, you don't come across a gun like this every day. Not that you can shoot anyhow, bud. You know, and I, I, I love to shoot this gun. I said in my past video that I had the barrels chimed and... Um, they said the barrels are fine, but they recommended that I shoot low brass, so not an issue. You know, that's what I shoot with it, low brass. It's a blast, but I, you know what? Low brass with cottontail rabbits around here, it's a cakewalk. And I actually prefer the low brass because rabbits die so easily, the low brass pellets don't barely penetrate into the meat. So, yeah, it's a great shotgun. Thanks a lot for asking, and thanks a lot for wanting to see that a little bit more. Um, you're putting out some great videos, buddy. I really appreciate it. Love your channel. Go check him out. Bluegrass Bushcraft. Robert, great channel. Garrett Brader. Hey, buddy, what's going on? Uh, how did I get into trapping? Uh, great question. Um, I've always been interested in the outdoors and the wilderness my entire life, as far back as I can remember. Um, I've always been into scouting and, you know, of course the TV channels you watch when you're a kid, you know, stuff like Daniel Boone and, uh, you know, Legend of Grizzly Adams, all that stuff. Boy, you know, that just sent my spirit wild, you know, and when I was a kid, I saved up $2 shoveling sidewalks and I went down to the local hardware store and I got myself a rat trap and I started trapping weasels on a stone wall and I did pretty damn good for myself at six years old trapping weasel so yeah um, 
I, I, I got into it just by pure interest for the outdoors. Uh, I guess I'm, I don't know if you would call it born to heart sportsman or, or what, you know, but yeah, hunting, trapping, fishing, anything like that. Oh yeah. You know, I really enjoy that, but great, great, great question, Garrett. Thanks for asking. Swamp donkey. Have I ever brewed my own liquor? No. <laughs> no, bud. I don't know if you were trying not to say moonshine, but... No, I've never brewed my own liquor and I've never brewed my own beer. Um, but uh, if you have, uh, shoot me a PM, man. I'll send you my address and you can send me as much home brew as you want to. But no, I never have. I've never, I've never done my own brew. So I got a couple buddies around here that are that are that are pretty hot on it, pretty damn good. So um, Heath Gagnon. Uh, Gonzo, great question. How old was I when I got my first cowboy hat? And I, have I been wearing them ever since? Yes, I was four years old, um, Heath. And I got the full outfit with chaps, um, the vest, western shirt, cowboy hat, gauntlet gloves, and a pair of six shooters. And I went to my first day of kindergarten class wearing that outfit and the teacher would have you lay down on a piece of paper and she would trace your body shape out on the paper and then she would draw in what you were wearing so yeah I was in full cowboy gear my sister made a beautiful video on when my father passed away of all the slides that had been taken through all the camping experiences and all the experiences, you know, throughout our, our, our life. And it's amazing how many of those pictures from a little kid right up to now that I'm wearing a cowboy hat. So yes, I've always worn a cowboy hat, brother. Um, and I will continue to wear a cowboy hat, but do I wear a baseball cap? Absolutely. There's a lot of times when a ball cap just fits, you know? And that's usually when I'm fishing. I like my cap. I, I like my my baseball cap. But way to go, Heath. Thanks for asking me, man. Great question. Uh, H and H Outlaws, Ricky. Hi, buddy. Thanks a lot for asking me. If I could have any gun, how do you ask a guy like me that question? If I could have any gun, if I could have any gun, I would go to the most world-renowned firearms custom firearms maker and I'd have a custom gun made and it would probably be in 25-06 if that much money was going into a custom firearm and I knew it was going to be of that quality that's that's not a bad round to be thrown out there 600 yards so um, yeah, I don't know how to answer that question, man. Uh, once you get your channel up and going, I'm going to ask you the same question. See how you answer. But anyhow, Ricky, thanks a lot. Check out H&H &H Outlaws. They're great. They're right down the road from me here. Um, there's some serious rednecks. Great guys. Uh, what do I got going on for stuff I want to talk about? I got a lot going on. Because um, it's the holiday season, I'm doing my icicles. My handmade glass icicles, ornaments for the Christmas trees, and every year I have to make many, many, many of those. They're all frosted and glass on the top. They're just beautiful. Been working on that, on um, putting together a couple of sheaths for uh, for Sodbuster Juniors. Um, Case Sodbuster Juniors. Here's some initials you guys might recognize. CMR Customs. Mr. Chuck Richards. This is a nice uh, sheath I built for him, and I got a uh, I got a Case Sodbuster Junior in there. These are just a, just a great knife. 
You guys can buy these at Lowe's. For the quality of steel, fit finish, quality in the knife, phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. Sodbuster Juniors. These things are great. And if you want a custom sheath made, talk to me. They fit in there. Incredible. Got his initials on the front and some tooling. This one I'm waiting for die for, so this is actually going to be black. But, um, like I said, I'm waiting on the die. Uh, here's, uh, here's another one I just finished up. This is an acorn. I'm not going to disclose the initials, though the gentleman that's, uh, that'll be watching this video will know exactly who that is. But yeah, this is an acorn brown. I haven't done the edge paint on it yet. Here's what they look like once the edge paint's all done on them. You know, all the edge finishes on there. I mean, they're real pretty. That's my initials. That's in the acorn brown. Really nice stuff. I'm really enjoying the leather work, guys. I've also got a belt going out to Chuck. Um, but like I said, I'm waiting for the dye. Uh, that brings me to um, what I got going on with my snowshoes. I want to show you guys what I use for snowshoes. This is my small lightweight travel snowshoe. They're made by Atlas and they're a rubberized fiber deck and that rubberized material is also used in the um, in the binding and they got great claws on them one behind your heel and you got these great crampon fronts cinchable binding and they're aircraft aluminum they're also light they don't weigh a thing but they are great you know and i'll use these if i'm just trekking about and i'm not you know carrying a pack but if i'm carrying a pack i'll be wearing my mountaineers now these are a pair of atlas mountaineers um these are a beautiful pair of shoes they got a great crampon binding with a great heel plate the whole um the whole binding system is a ratcheting binding system come on out of there give me a hard time I don't know why that's getting hung up on me like that, but there we go. Yeah, everything's a ratcheting binding, binding system so that um, once you start the strap around your boot, all you gotta do is crank it. The really nice binding system. Um, Atlas snowshoes are world renowned. They're probably the best, best out there. Again, all aircraft aluminum, super ultra lightweight. This I'll use to either haul my bulk sled or carry a full size pack. Not a problem at all. Not a problem whatsoever. Great pair of shoes. So, if you guys are looking for snowshoes, you know, snowshoeing's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, if you're going to be serious about it, you want to spend a couple dollars because if you go to like Ocean State Job Lots and you buy the snowshoes that they're selling and you breach a snowshoe, like if you step over a log and you don't make it all the way across the log, you're gonna bend them. They bend like, like crazy. That's never happened with these. And I traveled, with, I traveled the high peaks and wilderness with these um, and I've never had a problem. But I also do pay attention because I don't wanna have a problem. Um, poles. I use a three-section pole, telescopic. These are um, masters. These are really nice poles. These are light. Um, they're also, like I said, three-section. So when they collapse, they collapse really small. Very nice. This is a pair of Swiss, which is two-piece pole that I also use. And they're a very nice pole. Um, Again, if, if you're into, um, you know, getting into 
you know, going out and doing overnighters and getting getting out there a ways. Do not cheese on your poles. Um, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't recommend buying your poles at Walmart, your trucking poles, because they're easy to bend, real easy to bend. You bend a pole, you're using a stick. You know, so. Um, and if you guys don't hike or track with poles, uh, I found it to be very helpful for me. I really enjoy it. Uh, it works really great for me, uh, not only for my backcountry skiing, my snowshoeing, and uh, just right through the summer. Now I carry two poles when I'm hiking with my backpack, and I love it. I think it takes a lot of weight off my back when I'm walking, and it gives me a lot of stability. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I showed you guys, did I show you guys my new gloves? Got a pair of Mountain Hardware gauntlet gloves. These are really sweet. They got a great contour grip to them. Natural contour grip. They're Gore-Tex. And they also are water shield. So I can ice fish in these and everything. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mountain Hardware. But Mountain Hardware makes some super high quality stuff. Chuck Richards will let you know that. There ain't no doubt about it. Um, I got some really great stuff coming up, like I said, with um, TreyerWilderness.com. www.TreyerWilderness, T-R-A-Y-E-R, Wilderness.com. Glenn and Tammy, great people. Go visit them. Um, you, can, you can get them on YouTube on Mountain Man Journals. Uh, they got some great products out that they've produced. Uh, these are their um, multi-flame tools. This is the large, this is the small. I'm going to be doing reviews on both of these, so I'm not going to get into them right now. They're fire pistons and more. They're incredible. Absolutely incredible tools. Really cool. Really enjoying working with these. So I will be doing a video in the short, you know, in the near future here on those. So anyhow, guys, uh, yeah, I can't keep these going too long. Um, I got to give you guys a joke, right? So uh, this is a golf joke. I don't know if any of you guys out there are golfers, but um, Bob Johnson walks into the clubhouse of his local golf course, and he walks up to the bar, and he says to Billy, the bartender, he says, yeah, Billy, give me the usual. So Billy comes over, he says, Bob, he says, you all right? He says, you don't sound too good. Yeah, he says, uh, I had a little issue out in the golf course. Really? He said, what happened? He said, well, I showed up like I do by myself all the time. I walked up to the first hole and Mrs. Gilbert was standing there on the tee by herself. He says, yeah. So I says to her, I says, you mind if I join you? She... She says, no, go ahead. I'm fine with that. So I joined her. We went out on the course. He says, well, we got to the 18th hole there where it runs along the cow pasture. And she shanked her ball off into the cow pasture. He says, yeah. He says, so I went over there and I was looking for her ball. There's a bunch of cows. And there's a golf ball right in the cow's asshole. And it was the same exact golf ball as hers. So I turn around and I says, Hey, Mrs. Gilbert, come over here. I think I found your ball. So she came over. <laughs> and Bob Johnson says to her, Mrs. Gilbert takes the cow's tail, lifts it up, and he says, Does this look like yours? And she hit me in the neck with a two iron. There you go, guys. Shop Talk with Joe, part 10. Hope you guys saw some cool stuff. Um, don't forget to leave me a question. Ask me some questions. 
plenty of really cool stuff coming up. I got a lot of cool things going on. So as long as you guys are going to support me, man, I'm just going to keep going on with it. This is going to be the shortest shop talk with Joe so far. But anyhow, guys, listen, happy holidays. Um, Merry Christmas. What, however you celebrate your holidays, I hope you have a wonderful one. I can't figure out.